Are you having issues with Ableton Live crashing or getting weird error messages in Ableton Live? In today's episode of Behind the Space Bar, I'm gonna share seven things you can do to quickly get up and running and get a resolution to your problems. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome back to Behind the Space Bar. If this is your first time, welcome. This is a podcast dedicated to helping you learn to perform like a pro with Ableton Live. If that's you, then you are in the right place. Now, on today's episode, it's gonna be a little more technical, a little more practical than a lot of episodes. You know, last week's episode, I shared some tips and tricks just for solo artists, for live looping artists that they can learn from more traditional onstage performers. We go, went a little deep on that one, and that was really, really fun. I'll put the link to that in the show notes if you're listening. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube as opposed to listening to Apple Podcasts or Spotify, then leave a comment uh, on this episode and just let me know that you're watching, that you're alive, and say hey. And I'm super thankful and grateful that you are here. So let's dive in and get started. Now, I will let you know uh, that two of these tips I see almost no one do. And, and I don't want to pick on people that tend to watch on YouTube. A lot of you watching on YouTube miss these steps and it keeps you from quickly finding a solution to Able to Live. And I'm excited to share all these with you, but particularly those two. So let's start at the top here. Number one, if you're having issues with Ableton Live crashing, uh, you're getting error messages, then try opening a new live set and you go, Thanks, Will. Okay, great, that's really helpful. But if you've ever used Ableton Live and you've opened it and it says, would you like to reopen your last set? Um, often, I'll just see people keep going, yes, open, open, open. And there's something wrong with that particular live set, something that's corrupt, something that uh, went wrong, and they just keep opening that and Ableton crashes and Ableton crashes and Ableton crashes. Well, I've found a lot of success when that happens by just going, no, and then reopening Ableton Live and opening just a brand new live set, something that has no plugins, something that has no samples loaded in um, that allows me to start fresh and start over. So again, if you're experiencing issues with Ableton Live, experiencing bugs, instead of just reopening that live set, consider opening a brand new live set and starting from there. Now, number two, this ties into that. If you're having issues with your a particular live set that's causing issues, open a new one, and then number two, consider rebuilding your set. In fact, I recently had to do this because I experienced a really weird bug that I had never experienced before where Ableton was telling me there were samples missing from my live set. And if you've ever used Ableton Live for a decent amount of time, we've all seen the orange little message at the bottom that says, um, uh, you know, samples are offline, click here to learn more. It was not that. It was a, a message I had never seen before, I had never experienced. Uh, and I had a gig that I was getting ready for the very next day and I needed to load this live set on my second computer. So I thought I couldn't find a solution. I eventually did, thankfully. But in that moment, uh, to get it working, what I did is open a brand new live set and then I rebuilt my set. And what I figured is uh, figured out was I could open my live set in the browser and drag that live set into my new Ableton live set, uh, brand new with no return tracks, no, no plugins, no nothing. And once I did that, everything was fine. Sometimes you can drag the live set into another one. Sometimes you have to just literally bring your samples into the set and that fixes it for you. But uh, again, if you try rebuilding your set, you're very likely going to find a solution. Number three, uh, disable uh, your plugins in Ableton Live. Uh, I've had a lot of friends that upgrade their systems really quickly and they don't allow the people that make plugins to, um, uh, to get those plugins up to speed uh, with uh, OS updates, for example. So often you'll see people say, uh, hey, there's a brand new Mac OS update. They're super giddy, they're super excited. So they go and they update that. Uh, and um, when they do that, their plugins that they use that they rely on for keys, for pads, are not updated and they experience a lot of issues. So let me show you, uh, again, if you are brand new on uh, to Behind the Space Bar and you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, Spotify, maybe consider clicking over to YouTube for a second because I actually want to show you in Ableton Live how to fix this. Okay, so I've got Ableton Live open. Uh, you can see over here in the browser, if I go to plugins, there's where my plugins are, fantastic, great. I'm gonna do command comma, which is going to open preferences. If you're on a PC, that is control comma. And we want to go to the plugins tab here. And you look at the plugin side, it says use audio units version two, version three, use VS VST two plugin uh, options here, use VST uh, three, 
plugin system folders or custom folders, I'm gonna disable all of this. And one, you're gonna see Ableton Live loads a lot faster because it's not scanning for plugins. Uh, you could rescan your plugins here if you need to do that. But in this particular case, what we're gonna do is disable all plugins and just open Ableton Live. Um, it's, it should open a lot faster. Hopefully that fixes things for us. And then, um, you know, do kind of like an elimination diet. Like if you're trying to figure out what you're allergic to in your diet, add uh, plugins one at a time back in. You could literally go into your plugin folder on your Mac or your Windows machine and move those out, add them in one at a time to see what the cause is, okay? And then we'll talk about a solution with that that you've got to do a step further here in just a second. Number four though, try the same set that you have on a different computer. And what I mean by that is um, kind of similar to what the issue I had before is if you open your live set and you're having issues with it, load it on another computer and you're either gonna find one of two things. When you load that onto another computer, uh, it's gonna work, number one, or you're gonna have the same exact issue. And the goal when you're trying to solve a problem is to discover exactly what the issue is, to eliminate all other possibilities and, and, and boil it down to, it's gotta be this one thing. What's the one thing that's constant? What's the one thing that keeps following me uh, when I move this problem? So if I take it from one computer to another and it works, then I know it's something about that particular computer, my original computer. It's, it's a setting I have. It's um, uh, something about the OS. It's something about the install of Ableton. Uh, and I can isolate it to, it only happens on this computer, it doesn't happen on this computer. And then through process of elimination, you can start to say, okay, what's different between these two? Oh, this is an M1 Mac and I'm not having issues, this is an Intel Mac and I am having issues. Or this OS version is this, this OS version is that, maybe it's OS specific. Or on this computer, I'm using this custom driver from this audio interface company. On this one, uh, I'm just using headphones and I'm having no issues. Um, and then from there again, you can use troubleshooting steps to try to get both machines the same and see if it still happens, if it fixes it. Um, but again, taking that same live set and trying it on another computer will really, really help. Now, in a second, I'm gonna share again the two most important things um, that, that I think those of you particularly, again, not to pick on you watching on YouTube, miss very, very often that we get you to an answer very quickly. Uh, but before I do that, I wanna just ask you to consider subscribing here on YouTube, press the subscribe button, enable the bell icon. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Again, not every podcast is as technical and as quick running as this one is. Some of them have interviews. In fact, we've got an interview coming up, I think in a couple weeks, and you'll start to see a few of those a month coming in, which I'm super excited about. Some of them are a little more philosophical, but all of them have the goal of helping you learn how to perform on stage uh, like a pro with Ableton Live. Okay, our next tip is to install an older version of Ableton Live. This one in particular was a quick workaround solution. Uh, if you upgraded from Ableton Live 11, I think to 11.1, 11.2, I can't remember exactly where it was, there's a unique bug with older live sets. This tended to, uh, I see this surface a lot with folks that were using Ableton Live in a like worship leader context that were buying tracks from a specific source um, that used a very old version of Ableton Live to format their tracks. Uh, and people would open it up and it would say, uh, this file is corrupt, cannot open. Uh, and then they would get messages about non-unique pointy IDs, which is a very code level uh, uh, issue with Ableton. And so um, I did the thing I'm about to talk about here in a second that most of you do not do to try to find a solution. But um, before I could find that out, uh, I just went and I tested stuff. I tried on a new computer, I was able to replicate, but I realized, okay, if I go back, roll back to a previous version of Ableton, and I believe it was just Ableton Live 11, you may still be able to find that video on YouTube where I showed how to do it. And I just downgraded to a previous version. You can go to your Ableton account, download that version and install on your computer. Um, and if it works there, then great, right? And again, that's not a, uh, an ultimate solution because you wanna stay up to date as much as possible to get updates to get new features. But that's a, oh crap, I've got a show coming up. I've gotta get this file ready. That's a really great solution in that case. Now, let's talk about number six. Number six, like I said uh, in the beginning, is something that I see most people do not do when they experience an issue in Ableton. What do most of us do, um, at least in my experience, in years and years of teaching Ableton Live, what do most of us do when we have issues? We comment on a YouTube video, you search, you go to Google, why is Ableton Live, blah, blah, blah. Then you find a YouTube video that someone posted five years ago and you comment on it and say, all caps, please help, I'm having issues. Uh, I've got some older videos that I have where um, uh, you know, YouTube doesn't always like notify me or that goes to an old address so I don't always get comments. And I found a video the other day where there was over the span of four or five months, people asking, how does this work? Please help, please help, please help. 
And then someone got on and said, hey, a-hole, you need to respond to these comments. And I thought, well, yeah, I, I am kind of an a-hole, so I agree with you on that. But um, there's a better solution than commenting on really old YouTube videos at, hoping for help. There's a better solution than texting your friend that uses Ableton down the road and, and asking if they know what's up. The absolute best thing you can do when you have an issue with Ableton Live is to contact Ableton Live's support. Uh, you can go to their website to do that. You can email support at ableton.com, which I think is the best way just through email. And what's really great about that, they have a great support team. They're gonna get back to you quickly, but they have access to tools that no one else has. Certified trainers don't have, your friend down the road doesn't have, the guy or girl that made that YouTube video five years ago that's not responding to your comments because they're an a-hole uh, don't have access to these tools. And you can say, hey, uh, I'm having an issue with this thing. As a pro tip to report issues, it really helps to have screen captures. It really helps to say, I'm on this version. Here's the live set I have. Here's the steps I've, I've tried to fix it. Um, uh, you know, screen capture that process. Again, tell them what you've tried to do to fix it. Uh, you can say you've isolated to this specific thing. The more detail you give them, the faster response you're gonna get and the more favor you're gonna find with them as opposed to emailing them and saying, and I get this sometimes from customers, it doesn't work. And you're like, okay, well, what is it? And, and, and in what way does it not work? Give me a little bit of detail here. Like, help me help you, right? So contact Ableton. And, and again, they work really quickly, but they have access to tools where they can say, okay, send us this bug report. They'll tell you where to go on your machine to find a bug report to send to them. Um, they'll say, send us the live set. And they have tools where they can scan that and go, oh, well, it's an issue with this plugin. It's an issue with this thing. And they'll tell you exactly what the issue is. Uh, they'll give you a workaround or worst case scenario, they'll say, oh, this is actually a bug. We don't have a fix for it quite yet, but here's the workaround. Here's the solution, downgrade. Uh, run on a different computer. I remember when we first got M1 Max, uh, there was an issue with nested drum racks, as specific as that was, that would cause the CPU to spike. And I have a couple instruments on my site that I built that are nested drum racks that people are having issues with. And they reached out to me and said, hey, there's your, your instrument is buggy. And I went, no, my instrument's not buggy. Uh, and it's not necessarily a like Ableton specific thing because it's just specific to M1 Max, uh, Silicon Max. And so I reached out to Ableton and they confirmed, yep, that's exactly it. And actually we went back and forth quite a bit because they said, oh, we think it's this, we think it's that. And I finally sent them some videos and more info and they said, yes, it's an issue with nested drum racks. They reported the bug. I think it took a couple months for Ableton to fix that. And so I had some workarounds in the meantime, but reaching out to Ableton will get you an answer. Please, please, please do not comment on a YouTube video, cross your fingers and hope and pray that some random person on the internet will get back to you email Ableton immediately. Even if you're on the gig and even if you find the solution, email Ableton immediately on your phone. Um, and then if you find the solution, email back and go, actually, I found out what this is and it may help. Now, it's very possible, number seven, that when you reach out to Ableton, uh, you discover that, oh, it's an issue with this plugin made by this company, or it's an issue with this interface made by this company. So tip number seven is to reach out to the makers of your audio interface, your MIDI controller, whatever your gear is, uh, either hardware or software. So tip number seven is reach out to the people that make uh, the plugins, the hardware or software that you're using. Uh, because again, if you work through all those steps and you go, oh, it's an issue with this audio interface, I'm gonna email this company and I'm gonna see what they have to say. Hopefully you don't get you know, in a uh, like support war with them where they say, oh, that's on Ableton. And you email Ableton and Ableton says, oh, that's on that company. Uh, I've never seen that happen, but I've seen that happen in other contexts with other software where companies go, it's not our problem, it's this person's problem. But if you can isolate what that issue is and reach out to that company, um, then hopefully they can go, oh yeah, that makes sense, that's an issue. I, there was a issue recently with Ableton and there was a lighting software that um, based on a way they generate Ableton Live files automatically was causing issues with an Ableton Live update. It was kind of related to that uh, Ableton Live 11.2 update. And uh, I had a lot of people going, well, what's going on here? I didn't specifically use that software, so I didn't know. But people reached out to that company, and I think within less than a week, they updated their software and pushed out an update. So as opposed to being like, it's not our problem, it's Ableton's problem, they really quickly fixed things for their users and solved it, which was really, really great. So if you're having issues with Ableton, don't comment on a five-year-old YouTube video. 
cross your fingers, hope and pray that that person responds to you. Uh, work through these seven tips. Most importantly, tip number six and seven, which is contact Ableton, and then contact the makers of your plugins, hardware, software, uh, if you have issues. And I promise you, if you can implement these tips and tricks, you're gonna find a solution much, much faster than just sitting there and doing nothing and much, much faster than commenting on an old YouTube video. Now, another thing you could do that's really gonna help you not necessarily solve your problem, but help you learn how to use Ableton Live on stage in a more efficient, flexible, stable way, two things. Number one, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, we'll include a link to get over to the YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon, um, and you're gonna find access to two videos every single week, a podcast and a tutorial that's gonna help you learn how to perform like a pro with Ableton Live. And number two, if you're really ready to commit, to commit to this process and journey of learning how to use Ableton Live like a pro on stage, then consider joining the From Studio to Stage community. And you can learn how to do that at fromstudiotostage.com slash subscribe. And while you're there, you'll see you get access to over 60 courses, all created for live performance to show you how to perform on stage with Ableton Live, how to use your gear efficiently, set it up with Ableton Live. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro, uh, we have content that will serve you really, really well. Plus you get access to credits to purchase things for free from the shop. You get access to the From Studio to Stage community and uh, you get access to a monthly call that is just for you, for students every single month. So again, head to fromstudiosage.com slash subscribe if you're interested in really committing, making 2023 the year that you master Ableton Live. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Behind the Space Bar. I'll see you next Monday, 10 a.m. Central. Uh, take care, everybody. Bye.